He's an NBA legend, an eight-time All-Star, and the greatest dunker the NBA has ever seen. But just how good was Vince Carter actually, and why did he never go far in the playoffs? Vince was only two years old when he first dribbled a basketball. At the age of 11, he was able to touch the rim, and by 12, he was already dunking. As a high school freshman, a super quick Carter also played football as a quarterback until he broke his wrist. After a long recovery, Vince decided to test his athletic talents with volleyball. Incredibly, just one year after picking up the sport, Carter was named Conference Player of the Year. Vince played volleyball for three years, and he credits the game for improving his bounce to unprecedented heights. Interestingly, Vince also played saxophone and was even offered a saxophone scholarship. However, music and volleyball were just his hobbies, whereas basketball was his passion. In high school basketball, Vince immediately became a star. A unique combination of speed and athleticism made him unguardable, and opposing coaches constantly used double and triple teams to slow him down. As a senior, a 6'6 Carter averaged 22 points, 11 rebounds, 5 assists, and 3.5 and blocks per game. He led his school to the first state title in 56 years, became a McDonald's All-American, and was named Florida's Mr. Basketball. Vince followed the path of Michael Jordan, attending the University of North Carolina and playing for Dean Smith. Before he even suited up for the Tar Heels, kids were wearing his number 15 on MTV. Vince was already famous. However, he did not live up to the hype. Vince averaged just 7.5 points per game as a freshman and was quickly benched by Smith, primarily due to the lack of fundamentals and tactical knowledge. Carter was furious, but he kept working and soon fine-tuned all the details Smith required. Vince raised his level of defensive play, while also adding a wider repertoire of offensive moves and outside shooting. Then, two years in a row, Carter and the Tar Heels reached the Final Four, but lost in the semifinals both times. Vince finished his junior season with 15.6 points per game and was named second-team All-American, after which he declared for the 1998 NBA Draft. With the fifth overall pick, the Golden State Warriors select Vince Carter, who immediately traded him to the Raptors for his college teammate Antoine Jameson. Carter's cousin Tracy McGrady was drafted by the Raptors a year earlier, and the cousins became inseparable, forming a great relationship on and off the floor. After averaging 18 points, 6 rebounds, 3 assists, and 1.5 and blocks per game, Vince was almost unanimously named 1999 Rookie of the Year. Then in his second season, Vince improved his averages to 26 points, 6 rebounds, and 4 assists per game, and deservedly made the All-Star team. If the world didn't know him up to that point, Vince made sure they knew him after the 2000 All-Star Dunk Contest. He opened the contest with a 360 windmill dunk that made Shaquille O'Neal's jaw drop in amazement. With a pass from McGrady, his third dunk got another 50 points. It's over, Carter famously said, but he still saved the best for last. With his fourth slam, Vince dunked the ball with his elbow in the rim, and his performance is widely considered as one of the best in history of the dunk contest, if not the best. But of course, the All-Star Contest is one thing, where you are all alone and you have all the time in the world to gather your steps. But what was so mesmerizing about Vince Carter was that he was dunking the ball harder and more spectacularly in regular games than other people did in the dunk contest. He soon got nicknamed Half Man Half Amazing and was arguably the most popular player in the NBA. But Vince wasn't just an athletic dunker, no sir. Vince had a smooth jumper too, and in 2000, he shot over 40% from three, which was slightly overshadowed by his quick drives and rim-shattering dunks. Carter and McGrady were proving to be the most dynamic and most promising young duo in the league, and the two cousins led Toronto to their first playoff berth in franchise history. However, in the playoffs, the two young wings got slapped in the face. Carter shot an abysmal 30% in the series, and McGrady was only marginally better with 38%, and the Raptors got swept by the Knicks. Then after the season, Carter suffered yet another big disappointment. His cousin Tracy no longer wanted to live in his shadow. McGrady wanted his own team and opted to move back to Florida, teaming up with Grant Hill in Orlando. Later that summer, Carter went on to play at the Olympics, where he produced arguably the biggest highlight of his career. Against France, Vince stole the ball and ran towards the rim, while the 7 foot 2 inches tall Frederick Weiss stood directly in front of the basket to stop the Russian Carter. Only Vince had other plans. He jumped over Weiss and dunked the ball so hard that the Eiffel Tower trembled a little. Disrespectful. Team USA won the gold medal, and Carter led the Americans in scoring by a wide margin. He finished off a great season where he became a dunk champion, an all-star, and made the All-NBA third team. When Jordan retired, the NBA looked for his successor. 
Grant Hill was the most mature candidate, but he soon got injured. Kobe was still too young, and in 2000, Carter looked like he would become the face of the NBA and its next best player. In 2001, he was right on track. Carter averaged 27.6 points per game. He was named an all-star starter and received the most votes out of any player. Finn's sanity was in full effect. Carter became Air Canada and the most popular athlete in a country that only played hockey. Vince again shot over 40% for three and averaged over a steal and block per game for a third consecutive year. Despite losing McGrady, the Raptors improved both offensively and defensively, and Carter was named to the All-NBA second team. In the playoffs, the Raptors avenged their loss to the Knicks from the year before, and Carter led Toronto to their first ever playoff series win. In the conference semifinals, the Raptors played against the 76ers, which offered a classic. It was a shootout between the two most popular and most attractive players in the NBA. Vince Carter and the MVP Allen Iverson. After Iverson exploded for 54 points in Game 2, Carter returned the favor with 50 points in Game 3. Iverson then had another 50-point game in Game 5, but Carter had another rebuttal, and with 39 points in Game 6, he led the Raptors to victory. Then before the decisive Game 7, Vince made a controversial decision to attend his graduation at the University of North Carolina, which happened on the same day. Throughout the first half of the decisive game, Carter looked deflated, probably tired from the two flights he went through during the day. However, Iverson had a horrible shooting game too, which kept Toronto afloat. And with two seconds to go, Philadelphia had a one-point lead, but Toronto had the ball and the opportunity for a series-winning play. Del Curry inbounded the ball to Carter, who pump-faked and got one of the cleanest looks you could hope for. But he missed the shot, and the Raptors lost, which created the narrative that Carter was not a clutch player. But everybody has hiccups in their early career, and Toronto fans were still full of hope and still very much in love with the 24-year-old Carter. The problem was, Carter didn't love them back. If he did, he would have trained more and played harder. In the 2002 season, he was still an all-star. He still dunked the ball and produced mesmerizing highlights. But his numbers dipped across the board, and when you watched him, you always had a feeling that basketball was just a job for him, and that he only played for himself and his numbers, not playing hard defensively and not caring about the team. And because he didn't train as he should have, Carter battled minor injuries throughout the season, forcing him to miss the playoffs. Thankfully for the Raptors, they played more as a team and were better when Carter wasn't around. Toronto nearly advanced to the second round without Carter, losing by just three points in the decisive game against the Pistons. Then following his off-season surgery in the 2003 season, Carter only managed to play 43 games, averaging just 20 points per game, seven points less than two years prior. The Raptors became one of the worst teams in the league, but Vince was still super popular and got selected to the All-Star game as a starter. But because Michael Jordan played in his final season, Carter opted to give Jordan his starting spot in the All-Star game, which is the most notable moment of his season. For the 2004 season, the Raptors fans expected Carter to bounce back to the level of 2001, but Vince only averaged 22 points per game, shooting just 41% from the field. The Raptors missed the playoffs for the second straight season and knew something needed to change. So they hired a new GM and new head coach, Sam Mitchell. Before the 2005 season, the new management declared they were building for the future, not concerned about the short-term success in making the playoffs. The problem was Carter, who was 27 years old at the time and in the prime of his career, didn't like that. So Vince didn't just ask for a trade, he stopped playing like a professional. One of the biggest stars of the entire NBA started to sabotage his team so badly that Vince looked as if he was playing against middle school kids in the park. After a long 20 games of suffering, Toronto got rid of him and got almost nothing in return. And once he was traded to the Nets, Vince jumped from 16 points on 41% shooting to 27 and a half points on 46 6% shooting, from three rebounds and three assists to six rebounds and five assists. He started attacking the paint, drawing fouls, and getting in a defensive stance. Shortly after the trade, Carter said he didn't push himself hard enough in Toronto. I was fortunate to have the talent. You get spoiled when you're able to do a lot of things. You see that you don't have to work at it. Now with all the injuries, I have to work harder. I'm a little hungrier. Getting a fresh start has made me want to attack the basket. It was a slap in the face to the Raptors fans who supported him for a long time and organized campaigns to keep him in Toronto, shouting against the management. Carter took a big dump on the entire organization and the city, and the man who practically created basketball in Canada had become the most hated person in town. Every time he visited Toronto, they booed him like crazy, and the only comparable boos came when LeBron visited Cleveland in 2011 and when KD returned to OKC in 2017. On top of that, Vince's flash of inspiration didn't last long. 
just that first half season after the trade. Then he went back to his old habits. He was still great, at times living up to his half-man, half-amazing moniker. But he continued to frustrate fans with his laziness, carelessness on the defensive end, and missing a lot of shots in the playoffs. In four and a half seasons with the Nets, he still averaged great numbers. 23.6 points, 5.8 rebounds, and 4.8 assists. But his performances always left a sour taste in the mouth, because we expected so much more. The Nets actually had a negative regular season record during Carter's tenure, even though they had Vince, Jason Kidd, and Richard Jefferson all healthy and in their prime. In the playoffs, the Nets managed to win just a couple of first-round series in 06 and 07, and completely missed the playoffs in 08 and 09. For the 2010 season, the Nets finally traded the 32-year-old Carter to Orlando, where he showed the first big signs of aging and experienced a steep decline in his performance. Next year, he got shipped to Phoenix, who refused to offer him a new contract. Charles Barkley mockingly called him the half-man, half-a-season, and Bill Simmons was even harsher, dubbing Carter half-man, half-amazingly washed up. After that, Carter had finally realized he needed to change, so he made a complete 180 and became a really good player. His inability to dominate transformed him from a man who plays ineffective ISO basketball into a perfectly integrated piece of the team. He became a versatile veteran who understands the fine details of the game, who works hard, and who is a joy to play with. His poetic and thunderous dunks may have become rare, but he started shooting more from the perimeter. He became a better facilitator for others and moved without the ball. He did all the little things he should have done during the Vince Sanity era. Vince Carter wasn't just getting older, he finally matured. In 2014, when he was 37, Seven years old, the Toronto Raptors finally buried the hatchet with Vince when they played his highlight reel and thanked him for the time in Toronto. Even though a lot of people started booing, boos turned into cheers as Vince cried and sent kisses into the crowd. In 2016, while playing for Memphis, Vince won the NBA's Teammate of the Year award, and until the end of his career in 2020, he was a great mentor for younger players. Vince Carter was never a clutch player, he never won an MVP and has never even come close to winning a championship. Heck, he only made the conference finals once with Orlando, when he was the fourth best player on the team. He was one of the most talented players of his generation, but his career became a big what if. What if he took basketball more seriously and played harder? What if he and Tracy McGrady stayed in Toronto? But even with all of his flaws, he's the only player in NBA history to have played for 22 seasons and is the only person to play in four different decades. Only Kareem and Robert Parrish appeared in more games than Vince. Carter is in the top 10 all-time in three-pointers made, and he's one of 27 players in history with over 25,000 points. But that's not even what we're going to remember him for. We're going to remember him for being the most vicious dunker the game has ever seen. Not Jordan, not LeBron, not Giannis. Vince Carter was the best dunker ever, and he is the single most responsible person for making Canada the second most represented nation in the NBA outside of the USA, with 25 Canadian players on NBA rosters for the 2022 season.